Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Dev Diary. So, as I recently noted on Patreon, sometimes projects don't go according to plan. And so this week, we're working on a backup plan. But backup or no backup, I'm still actually really excited about finally getting around to this one. So before we jump into things, remember to leave a like if you enjoy the video and subscribe if you're new to the channel. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you don't miss future videos. The goal for today's project is pretty simple. Make a game that changes based on the time of day, like real life time. I've wanted to do this ever since I saw different Pokemon appear at night, all the way back with the release of the original Pokemon Gold slash Silver. And so I decided to base a similar concept around fishing, inspired by the concept of spooky fish at night from the game Dredge. Now, for the most part, this is just a proof of concept. The fish are spawned in random locations in the room and simply move about the space at random times, constantly choosing new destination points. In other words, they simply patrol the area and using some simple kinetics to make things more organic, the fish are broken up into at least four parts. A head, front body, midsection, rear body, and tail. Now, the spawn code also includes some extra values that will come into play when night falls. Now, like I imagine most game engines these days, GameMaker allows you to easily read the user's system time. So for the purposes of this project, if the user is playing the game before 12 p.m., they will simply see a pond full of normal, albeit slightly long fish. However, playing the game after 12 p.m., the player will be met with mutated, horrifying versions of those fish. Some normal in length and some extending to uncomfortable degrees. This is all determined through a single time of day check and extends to the sprites drawn, the length of fish, and the general color scheme of the play area. And in case you're curious, there are technically 10 variations of fish parts for each section, including the default normal versions. And I did not realize until putting everything together that a lot of these variations ended up making the fish look more like uh, centipedes than anything. So there's that. Anyway, as I mentioned earlier, this is technically a fishing game, so the player can spawn a little bobber to try and hook what could either be considered a nice meal for dinner or uh, the demon spawns from the deepest depths of hell. The bobber itself is a struct of data that treats it like an object without much of that extra baggage. In its initial state, if the player clicks, they will eventually land the bobber where the mouse was on the click. This switches it to the next state, where the bobber can then be reeled in by holding left click. And when the bobber has been completely reeled in, it returns to the first state to repeat the process. Now, the state can be cancelled to the default state at any time by pressing spacebar, and right click will attempt to fish out any potential spawns. This is done with a simple distance check. If near enough to a fish, the bobber will mark it to be destroyed, award a point to the player, and reset the state. And that was the project. Again, more of a proof of concept than anything, and honestly, really glad it ended up working because otherwise this week's video would have kind of been in danger. Regardless, it's pretty obvious why this isn't really a thing in most games because, you know, you can't or you shouldn't really punish the player for playing the game on their own schedule. But it's such an intriguing idea, you know? Like, imagine something like Legend of Zelda or Mario, but the levels are different based on the time of day. That's kind of wild. And personally, while I would love to invest time into such a project, it's an incredibly niche idea that it'd probably be a waste of time. But like anything done for this series, it's nice to know that it's possible and to get a better idea of the potential that exists. I mean, reading users' system data is nothing new, but it's new ground for me personally. And that's always at least, you know, half the reason to do something, right? So before we wrap things up, I'm curious to know what's been the latest thing that you've learned lately in your development journey. Or hey, what's the one mechanic you love that should be used in more games? Be sure to leave any and all thoughts you have in the comments. And as mentioned earlier, I am on Patreon. If you'd like to help me continue making this series, your support can get you access to exclusive community content, including games game downloads, and even unlock early access to the weekly videos before they hit YouTube. But with that said, brings us to the end of today's Dev Diary, so thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.